Hello, in this exercise we consider a whole life insurance issued to a select life age 30. The insured sum is 200,000 euros payable at the end of the year of death. We also know that the premiums are paid annually and for a term of 20 years. In the first part of this question, we need to write down an expression for the net future loss random variable. Recall that the net future loss is a difference between present value of benefit and goal and the present value of net premium income. Note that we model losses from the insurance company perspective. Therefore, benefit our goals in this case is a whole life insurance. In other words, the insurance company will have some benefit our goals due to the fact that it has to pay out insured sum to a policyholder. Denoting as the insured sum of 200,000 euros, we recall from chapter 4 that the present value of whole life insurance is a product of insured sums times the discount factor, in this case v to the power k30 plus 1. In other words, we discount to times 0 the insured sum payable at the end of the year of death. On the other hand, the insurance company has also a premium income because the policyholder who bought this whole life insurance has to pay annual premiums for a term of 20 years. We could model this premium income flow as term annuity due for a select life age 30 with the term 20 multiplied by the annual premium P. In other words, the policyholder will pay a premium P for a whole life insurance that he bought for a term of 20 years, given that he is alive at the time of payments. In part B, we need to calculate the net annual premium, and for that we're going to use the equivalence principle. Under the equivalence principle, the net premium P is set such that the expected value of future loss is zero. That is, the expected present value of benefit on goal is equal to expected present value of net premium income. Or we could write it down using the actuarial notation for the expected present value of whole life insurance and for the term annuity due. That is, it's going to be S times the expected present value of whole life insurance for a select life age 30 equal to P times expected present value of a term annuity due for a select life age 30 with a term 20. For this exercise, some annuities and insurance functions are given in the tables D2 and D3 in the appendix of the book. And in particular, in the table D2, we can find that the expected present value of a whole life insurance issued to a select life age 30 is equal to 0.007693. Although we are not given with the term annuity due in this table, we can express the term annuity due as a difference between a whole life annuity due for a life to a select life age 30 minus the deferred for 20 years annuity due. Which in turn can be written as a whole life annuity due minus whole life annuity due for a life aged 50 uh, multiplied by the actuarial discount factor. 
Note that here the expected present value is not for a select class because we assume here that in this exercise that the select period is two years. In the same table, we can find the expected present value of a whole life insurance to a select life age 30, which is here, and also the actuarial discount factor right here. And finally, in the table D3, we can find the expected present value for a whole life insurance for a person for 50 years. If we plug in all these numbers, we obtain that the term annuity due is equal to 13.04178 and using the equivalence principle, we find that the annual premium is about 1179.73. In part C, we have to calculate the probability that this whole life insurance contract makes a profit for the insurance company. Let's recall from part A that the net future loss is a difference between a benefit, a present value of benefit at go and present value of net premium income. Note that this loss function is random because both benefit at goals and premium incomes are life contingent. Therefore, the loss values of loss depends on the time of death of a policyholder. We say that the contract makes a profit when the associated losses are negative. Therefore, we need to find the probability that the net future loss random variable is negative, which means that the present value of benefit on goals is less than the pre present value of net income premium. Note that both sides of this inequality are random. However, we can use a trick here by realizing <coughs> the fact that if policyholder dies in 19 years, then the net loss function is going to be positive. I will leave you this as an exercise given that we assume that interest rate i is equal to 5%. But what is important here is that the loss function will also be negative if the policyholder dies somewhere be before the 19 years. You can see this from the fact that the term annuity is increasing with survival period of a policyholder within the term. Therefore, on the right hand side of the inequality, instead of the term annuity, we could use annuity certain with a period of 20 years which means that we don't have any more the randomness on the right-hand side of this inequality. We could further rewrite this expression using the formula, uh, using the continuous compounding. And formula for the annuity certain. from which we can obtain an expression for the random variable k30. Because we know all the variables in this expression, we can we find that the probability that k k30 should be larger than somewhere around 51.5 it means that a policyholder has to survive for at least 52 years to find this probability we can use the table d1 
and write that the probability of survival for at least 52 years is equal to rest of L82 divided by L select 30, which is around 0 0.707. In fact, you can verify yourself that the net losses will be negative if the policyholder dies in 52 years, but it will be positive If he dies one year earlier which means that the contract makes a profit if a policyholder survives for 52 years 